Okay, I've got my hook in the vise. In this case, it's a Tiemco 760 SP. It's a size 8. Could be any fairly heavy weight, uh, weight uh, wet fly hook. I've mashed down the barb and I've slid on a, a three or three and a half millimeter tungsten bead. Apart from a pair of scissors and of course a bobbin holder, you'll be needing a couple of special tools to tie this fly. A dubbing twister and something to hold your rabbit hair in when we're going to spin the front haggle. I like this one from Vosla, but basically any clip can be used. The nice thing about this one is that you can manipulate the fibers on both sides of the clip. All right, let's begin. I'm tying the fly with Unithread 8O in white. So first I attach the thread, just a few wraps. Tail is made from good old classic crystal flash. Tease out a couple of strands. Double this over the hook and then tie it in somewhere around the middle, fold back and tie down all the way to where the bend of the hook begins. In this case it's more or less right between the point and where the barb was. Cut off the waist and instead of just a straight cut of all these fibers I'm going to cut them into different lengths. Looks a bit more natural than just a square cut. Next up is the ribbing. In this case I'm just using some 8 pound monofilament. Bring the thread back to the front of the fly. Catch in the mono. Catch it in all the way. And as you tie it down, let the thread transport it to the underside of the hook shank. Okay, leave that hanging there to secure the wing when we tie that in. Now for the body I'm using white STS, sorry, STF dub. You could use white SLF, you could use white ice dub or pearl ice dub or I like this soft white dubbing. Dub your thread a little bit at a time. The less you use, the more of the fiber comes in contact with the thread and the easier it is to dub. So, dub the body and as you move forward, try and create a little bit of a taper so it gets thicker towards the head of the fly. Don't go all the way up to the bead. Leave a little bit of a space there between the end of the body and the bead for the wing and the spun hackle. Alright, for the wing I'm using this light sand colored rabbit or zunk strip that have been cut into very thin strips. These are only about a millimeter and a half or two millimeters wide. I like the length of the wing so that the skin extends to about the end of the tail. I'm going to cut the strip a little bit longer than that. Like that. So I lay the skin on top, let the end of the, the skin extend to the end of the tail and tie down everything skin and hair even the hairs from this part of the skin that's sticking forward that you're really not going to be using just tie that down all of it at once now as you tie this down this very thin strip sometimes tends to roll over so with a good pinch and loop 
you can steer it into place a lot easier. Now by tying in all this hair from this part of the skin that I'm not really using, I create a little bit of a taper because I tie in a little bit more hair here at the front than what's on the hide itself. So just cut this off, the waist. Any little piece of skin sticking up, just push it down with your nail and crush it down with the tying thread. Now we have the rib waiting. I'm going to use a needle to separate the hairs so that I don't trap any hairs as I come round with the rib. Secure it with the first turn, just where the body begins. Come round again. Just secure it in open turns. No need to use a lot of ribbing. Just three or four or five turns. The point of the ribbing is only to secure the sunker strip in place. I suppose you could use some sort of pearl tinsel or even silver tinsel. I just like mono because it's so easy to to bring through the, the sunker strip without it catching all of the thin rabbit hairs and and it's very very durable. Lock it in place with three or four wraps of thread. Fold it back and use another couple of tight thread wraps before you cut off the waist that locks it securely into place. All that remains now is to spin a front hackle of a white rabbit. So I'm not going to need very much. Just pull out three inches, six inches of thread, double it, make a couple of turns of thread around the hook. Now I have a gap here that of course corresponds to the diameter of the of the hook and the materials that I've tied in and it's this gap will cause the fibers to fall out uh, as I place them in the loop so I close this gap by coming around with my tying thread once or twice around the loop itself tighten that in with a couple of turns of tying thread lock it and I've now got the two legs of the loop completely closed together. For the front tackle I'm going to use white rabbit once again. I'm using this very thin cut sunker strip because I don't need very much hair. Take off about I don't know three quarters of an inch or an inch. Cut it off and then carefully hold the skin and pull out the fibers so that they are more or less perpendicular to the piece of skin. Take your tool here and clamp the fibers. Now I like to make sure that Everything is sitting neatly and then with your scissors cut off the hide as closely as you can. Open the loop, insert your dubbing tool like that. So come in with your rabbit. Close the loop around it carefully and let it go. So far it's only held in place by the two legs of the loop. So I can carefully push the hairs forward so that I make maximal use of the length and then spin it up like that. 
take care not to spin it too much or you risk breaking the thread. Now simply wind this as a hackle, stroke back the fibers for each turn so they fall nicely backwards over the wing. Keep going forward, put one turn in front of the other, effectively filling up that space that we left between the body and the tungsten bead. And as you come to the end, simply cross over with your thread, pull it hard so it slips in underneath the bead. Three turns is more than enough. Cut off the waist. Instead of making a whip finish at this point, I simply take my super glue, run a little bit of glue on the thread, pull everything back tightly, and simply wind that glued thread until it's used up. Cut off the waist and come in with a little piece of velcro and just brush this hackle backwards. And there you have it. A very nice, effective, little, light colored streamer. Has a very nice jigging motion, especially if you use a, a loop knot. You'll get a very nice jigging motion out of it because of the, of the heavy tungsten head. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you'll enjoy tying and fishing the fly.